Hello and welcome to this episode. So in the previous video, I explained to you that one of the advantages of using PyTorch over NumPy is um, the fact that you can get GPU acceleration. Like PyTorch basically supports GPU acceleration. So if you have a GPU on your computer, then you have the advantage of training faster and being able to crunch in on large um, data set, larger data set than you can with um, vanilla NumPy. And the reason is that NumPy simply doesn't support GPU accelerations. So this video is just about showing you how to take advantage of GPUs using PyTorch. So I'm going to start off by importing Torch. We will not need NumPy in this video, but um, I will import it anyway. Import NumPy as NP. Okay. So I'm waiting for Collapse to finish whatever it has to do. Sometimes slow when you start it afresh. Okay, so now we have what we need imported. Torch has an API that helps us to check if there is a GPU available on our computer. And the way to do that is to use the CUDA submodule of the Torch package. And then there's a function called is available. So let's see if there is a CUDA or GPU supporting the Colab notebook that we are running right now. So I'll say torch.cuda.is available. And let's see. So at this point, it's telling me that it is false. So what it means is that whatever computer on Google's cloud that is running this notebook doesn't have GPU enabled. Thankfully, Google makes it possible for us to change the runtime type in Google Colabs so we can select if we want a TPU or GPU support. And the difference between the regular notebooks and the one that has a hardware accelerator is that the hardware accelerator also has a time limit. Um, the session will expire after a while because GPUs are, of course, expensive. They can't give it to you forever. So I'm selecting that I want a GPU. I click on Save. And you can see that the notebook is restarting itself and it's trying to connect. It's trying to initialize once again. OK, now it is connected. Let's run the import. And let's check if there is a GPU available now. So you can see that now torch.cuda dot is available actually returns true. And so it means we have a GPU supporting what we want to do. Okay, now that we have a GPU supporting what we want to do, how do we move our data from CPU? How do we move the tensors from CPU to GPUs? And PyTorch makes it very simple. So if I'm creating um, data, I'll say touch.random, touch dot run, no, sorry, touch dot run, and I'm going to create um, a five by three. What I can do is I can pass device, and then I can say CUDA. So by doing this, what is happening is PyTorch is creating this tensor not on the CPU of the machine that is supporting this notebook. It's rather created on the GPU, okay? So this is one way. If you are creating the tensor, you are able to specify the target device on which you want it to run, okay? Another thing that you can do is I can be able to say, If I do this, it basically means we are moving the data from the GPU to the CPU. Now you might not recognize the advantage of using a GPU because we are not building a neural network with PyTorch yet and so you are not going to see the performance gains. But I'm just showing you this so that when we start building neural networks and I, I'm moving large data sets to GPUs, then you understand how things are working. Okay. All right. So this is it. You can see that you can specify the device as either CUDA or CPU. Another way you can do with uh, the CUDA is you can give an index. So there are some computers that have multiple GPUs in them. And so you can target a particular GPU by giving an index. And the index starts from zero. So if I do data is equal to uh, RAND and then CUDA zero, it basically means use the first GPU that is installed on the computer. 
And because this way of checking whether GP is available or not, and then that is when you decide whether you have to put your data on the CPU or on the GPU, there is actually um, a shortcut and then it's a convention in the PyTorch community. So what we do, first of all, is we say device is equal to touch dot device so we are creating a device and then i'll say cuda zero if touch dot cuda dot is available so i check if touch dot cuda is available else cpu so basically we are creating a touch device here and then we say check if cuda is available then set the device to CUDA 0. So we are targeting the first GPU. Otherwise, just let us use the CPU as it is, okay? So if you run this, you have a device created. And so for subsequent data creations, you can just specify the device without having to check if CUDA is available. So you just, you just use this paradigm so that your code can run on machines that support both, um, machines that don't have GPUs as well as machines that do have GPUs. Because if you code, and then you do what I did here by moving things to G, um, GPU, then basically your, your code will not run on a computer that doesn't have a GPU. So once you do this check, a device is initialized based on whatever hardware is um, installed on the computer and you'll be able to create things as you expect. So I can say X is equal to um, torch.rand. I'll create five by five. And I'll just say device is equal to the device that I've created. So at this point, if there is a GPU available on my computer, which is the case, then the Tensor X is sitting on the GPU. Otherwise, it is going to sit on the CPU. So this is all I have to show you about using GPUs on um, with PyTorch. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.